What is a bench? Such a simple thing. A place to rest, to meet a friend, to put down your bag and sip a coffee. You probably pass through dozens of benches every day and don't even realize it. For most of you, the only time you think about benches is where you can't find one. <laughs> I am a designer, and we designers like to think of ourselves as problem solvers, often seeing opportunities where nobody else does. In 2018, I spent a year thinking about benches, and I'll never see them the same again. I hope by the end of this talk, neither will you. I grew up with paint on my clothes and glue on my fingernails because I was always creating, problem solving, and building things together with my hands. I was always excited to ask the question, how can we? When I was in high school, I asked, how can we design a building that looks like a seahorse? When I was in university studying architecture, I asked, how can we design a museum that looks like stones that erose in the Arizona desert? And when I graduated, I got my first paid job as an architect in a global firm in the UK. I was part of a team designing a 700-meter tall tower for the city of Mumbai. And when I returned to Hong Kong, I went on to design airports. Recognize this place? <laughs> <laughs> But in corporate architecture, it felt that different questions were being asked. How can we build the tallest, the biggest, the best? While these projects were big and impressive, they did not make me feel satisfied. In 2014, I entered a design competition for the Pacific Place shopping mall. I had the freedom to ask the question I really wanted to ask. How can we bring people together in a moment of delight? My winning project was the Curious Horns, wicker trumpets hanging from the ceiling in an atrium. People would walk underneath it, hear bits of music, or watch the videos inside. I saw people interacting, looking, smiling, and laughing. And I realized I really enjoy working on projects of a human scale, where we were able to let people experience real joy. So it prompted my husband and I to start our own practice, where we were able to work on some of the projects that we really loved. In 2018, we bid on a project for the upgrade of the Sha Tin Town Hall in the northern part of Hong Kong. Town halls are community centers where people come together. And this time we asked, how could we create that same sense of joy and interaction in this meeting place? We also asked, could we use the materials from Chartine and give it back to the community? We found the answer to this question in Chartine's trash. In our research, we learned that plastic waste is a big problem in the Shengmun River, which runs through Chartine. Over 17 and a half million pieces of plastics were discharged from the river into the sea every year. 
I asked, what if we could take those plastic out of the river and into the town hall? Could we create something that is unique for the community? So we proposed to make benches out of plastic waste, 100% recycled, 100% recyclable. We had no idea what we had set up to do. It was more time consuming, more expensive, and a lot more complicated than we thought. The first question was, how much plastic would we need? We calculated that we would need about 20,000 pieces of HDPE plastics. These are your shampoo bottles, your detergent bottles, those strong, durable plastics you use at home. And I thought it would be easy to collect 20,000 pieces of HDPE plastics. We reached out to community volunteers and a waste recycler in Shatin who were already organizing collection events. We spoke to them about how we could collect the plastic that we needed. We are designers, but we had to learn a lot about waste management very quickly. My team and I had to collect all those plastic, transport, and store them in a container every week until we had enough. It took us two months. Then we asked, how could we turn the plastic into furniture? There are no plastic manufacturing factories in Hong Kong. So in order for us to export the plastic waste to a factory in mainland China, first, we had to turn the plastic waste into pallets at the factory the palace would then be remolded into the shapes that we wanted. So who could make the palace for us? This was another challenge. We tried four different local recyclers, and it was a five-month emotional roller coaster ride. Time after time, we would send the sample palace to mainland China to make sample furniture. And time after time, we were disappointed by the results. The samples were either too weak, too crumbly, or they just cracked. The Hong Kong recycling plants did not have the capabilities to sort and wash the plastics sufficiently. We spoke to the academics, the government, and the plastic manufacturer but no one had a ready solution. But we kept our hopes up. Working with the plastic manufacturer, we still used our collector plastic, but mixed it with some virgin materials for strength. Then we asked, how could we create something that is 100% recyclable, something that could last forever? I think back to when I was a student, I read the book, William McDonald's Cradle to Cradle, a call to eliminate the concept of waste. It changed my whole perspective. Before, I thought, as designer, we are problem solvers for today, creating spaces for people to work, play, and live in right now. But I realized, we need to ask other questions too. How can we keep the materials out of the waste stream? How can we protest the resources that we have? That is our responsibility. One year after I asked the question about what we could do for Shatin, this was our final product. We created this bench out of a series of identical trapezoids. They're all stacked together on metal rods, like fish balls on a stick. The recycled plastic has a very rich and rough texture that is filled with the beauty of imperfection, the material's past and its future. There are no glues 
and no metal fixings. It can be straight, it can be curvy like a river, or as long or as short as we need it. Our final product is 40% recycled plastic, 60% virgin materials. Not 100% recycled, but it's a step forward. It can be recycled infinitely. We've learned a lot through this process. First, we realized that we, we needed to work with so many different partners to make our vision into a reality. The plastic, adopting recycling as part of your lives, the community volunteers organizing collection events and beach cleanups, the local waste recycler doing the mechanical work, and the plastic manufacturer testing the materials. But these parties were not well connected yet. Second, the local recycling industry is still relatively underdeveloped. They did not have sufficient resources to invest in more advanced recycling technology. And third, there are no plastic manufacturing factories in Hong Kong, so it means high environmental and financial cost, offsetting the benefits of recycling. As a designer, we found our role in connecting the dots between the different parties to create something that is meaningful, functional, and beautiful. It is a work that is truly from the community, that is flexible, durable, that can last forever. We all know the three L's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And yet, only 11% of our 950,000 tons of plastic waste every year was recycled. Can we all think like designers, problem solvers, and tackle the hard questions? It doesn't end with you putting your plastic bottle into the recycling bin. How can we change our own buying habits into choosing more products labeled recycled and recyclable? How can we supports the growth of the local recycling industry. How can we make reducing waste the most attractive option? A bench, such a simple thing. But for me, a sign of the huge potential to turn plastic waste into an infinite resource, that is a future I hope we can design together. <laughs>